Right, hello guys, welcome to another day. I've, I've met up with my friends, my Dracula family. You've got Mr. Dracula and Mrs. Witch here. Hello. <laughs> uh, where are we? Beamish. Beamish. Beamish Museum. I don't think I've ever been. I've heard about it. I thought I might have been, but judging by this queue and how big it is, I don't think I have. I think I've been to similar places. Really looking forward to this, but we're in a queue, a massive queue, massive queue, massive queue, and I need a wee. So I'm trying to hold it in. I'm, I'm dying for a wee. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna have a good day, so let's see what happens. Okay, we're in Beamish Museum. It's massive. You need a tram to get from A to B. When I say a tram, it's one of them things, the like buses on skates. Um, it's very windy and I've not brought my proper camera. I didn't want to carry it around. Um, the first mistake of the day, okay, I was desperate for the toilet. I was waiting in the queue to come in. So these two had fast passes. They had like free passes to get in. I didn't, so they had to wait. Well, we had to wait in the queue where I could buy a ticket. But I needed the, I needed a wee really desperately. So they give me one of the fast passes. I got in straight away to get to the toilet. So I went to the toilet. Um, I went in the women's toilets, didn't I? I went in the women's toilets and the women give me really funny looks and then I walked out and the men who were waiting for their wives to come out give me funny looks. <laughs> I did eventually get to the men's toilets and I had a wee. I washed my hands, don't worry. Um, but not the best of starts. We're just in a kitchen at the moment and there's a lovely lady here. She's making bread how they used to make... What century are you in? Uh, we're in 1825. 1825, they're making proper... Can I show this sign? They're making proper bread. I don't know if you can see that. That's the ingredients. Uh, rye meal, flour, warm water, salt and yeast, and she's just made it. It's rising. It's rising. Yeah, but if you lift that off, it's gonna not rise. Uh, there you go. Fire's on, it's all ready to go. But I've just explained, I made in a video. Can you remember I made some bread and it was literally just beer and flour? She's going to try that. I'm trying to bring her into the 21st century. I don't know what you'd call this room. That was the kitchen in there. But people are making lavender. Go on. It does smell nice. You've literally got a box of... Is it la Is it real lavender? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A box of lavender. You get a piece of cloth. And you wrap it up, and then what do you do with it? Come on, you're a witchy person. What do you do with lavender? You put it in your drawer, make your socks smell nice, wouldn't you? That'll take some doing. Make your socks. <laughs> make your smocks. Socks. socks smell nice. Yeah, them in That's your what drawer. washing machines are for. No, but people like you have been away from home for a year. You might need some of these. Just coming into the parlour now, and my Dracula family don't like it, and I'll tell you why. There's garlic hanging up off the off the walls there, off the ceiling. They're not real. Yeah. How can they be real? Oh, do you think they're stuffed? Yeah. That's a rabbit. That's not real. That feels like a Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> leg. That ain't real. I bet that bit's tasty. That's not real. Okay, we've come upstairs into some kind of bedroom. Curtains are too long. They should have made them the right length. No one's made the bed. Two people sleeping here, not made the bed, and there's a big stain there. You wouldn't, honestly, this would get a one star in a hotel, <laughs> if that. You know when you go on TripAdvisor and you give one out of five? You'd wish you could give 0 0.000, 0 0.000, 0 0.000, 1 out of 5 in here. That is definitely we. We're having an argument at the moment. Is that we or is it not me? That's we. <laughs> Someone in this museum has gone out of the way to make it look like we by weeing. 
It is very authentic because it is we. So this is like a... You don't have stains on this bed, so I'm guessing this is like someone posh. But you see lavender in a little bowy piece of string there. And Martin and Majuli are trying to get me dressed up. What? What's? There we go. Yeah, you're all ready for you. But that's like a girl's. No, it isn't. You've got something like that on underneath. No, this is a that's shirt. That's not for a man. Yeah. I feel like that man. What's he called? Dan, Dan the Highway Man. No, I'll take Adamant. 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 Yeah. 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 It's been a long time, Dan. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna stay. Honestly, as soon as I have a meal. <laughs> you look very flamboyant. <laughs> so we're outside at the moment with Dracula and Witch, and something I wanted to point out. If you look at Dracula, will you look that way, please, Mr. Dracula? There's Dracula's profile. Look at his nose. Looks very Roman. Horrible. But look at witch's nose. Now, you'd expect witch's noses to be pointed, but this is the most rounded nose you've ever seen in your life. There's nothing witchy about her. Because witches are not all evil. I've no idea which room we're in at the moment. It's got some weird machines in it, but there's one over here. A poodle catcher. Look at this. A poodle catcher, they've caught a poodle. There's its paw. Little poodle catcher's paw. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Me Julie would love this because I remember Me Julie wanted to get wool and uh, spin it on a spinning wheel. Me Martin, if you haven't done it yet, please buy Me Julie a spinning wheel because that's her aim in life. There you go, Me Julie. There's a, a spinning wheel in the room upstairs from where I've just been talking about it. But in the corner here, you've got a bed. And I keep getting... Everyone's going to be commenting saying these are orbs. I'm sure it's just dust, but yeah. things keep coming over. But did you... You just said as we were walking up the steps that this is a haunted room. It's not. I feel warm, but I think that's the fire. But there's a bed in the corner here, and I'll tell you why it's wrong. I'll, this is very wrong. Firstly, it's about five foot six long. It should be made six foot long for the average per maybe six foot five, just to accommodate everybody. Secondly, it's a single bed. Now, whoever made this in the corner of the room, if they'd have put it out another six inches, 12 inches, that could have been a double bed. You could have fit two in there. And this is a waste of space. They could have had... Bunk beds. You could have fit four people in this corner, but they've just fit one person in. Just my opinion from the 20... Are we in the 21st century now? Yeah. Witch and Devil have been here before, and they reckon this is a haunted room. Now, <coughs> they have given me some... Ev I'm a bit sceptical when it comes to, to ghosts and things, but when I stayed with them last time, they had like a recording and it was a train in the background there was no train but you could hear a choo-choo of a train literally and it was very convincing evidence if i'd have been there and seen there wasn't a train there but i wasn't there so i don't know if there was a train there but they go to ghost hunts and things the big believers and they said they came in this room what a year ago was it no, last time you came four years ago and they took a picture down here and there was like a tankard or something and the picture they took was like no it didn't have the tankard there right what was it you explain it we took a picture of the room you took a picture of that ca it cabinet is, yeah it's blank like it is and but when we got home there was a picture with a tankard on it like a, 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 joke, a milk like joke. joke wasn't it as though well, someone was slamming it down on that unit over there so on, on the picture was like a milk jug Liquid and liquid out coming out of it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of orbs, but I'm pretty sure it's just dust. I don't know. Well, no. It was Melissa who took the photo, wasn't it? She, she, she was the... 
Right, we've come into a room here and this is how they used to make candles in the 1820s. Now this is beef fat. And what they do is put it in this machine. This is like a mould, if you like, for, cam for candles. They put a piece of string down there, pour the beef fat in or push it down somehow. And then they'd let it, they'd put it on here to set. But you used to have a big rat problem in them days, so they'd hang a dead badger off the wall because rats were scared of badgers because badgers ate rats. So the smell from the badger would put the rats off coming to eat the beef fat off the candles. Fascinating. Um, nowadays we use beeswax, but even in them days they did have beeswax in churches and things like that. The posher people used beeswax. But these guys, the poorer people, used beef fat. This is something you will never ever see again in your life. A robin and a pig in the same picture. How beautiful is that? So we're in the town at the moment. This is like the town centre of the Beamish Museum. And it is literally a proper town. And these are all original shops from the day. Obviously, we're going forward a hundred years or something. The, apparently, 1913 is the date we are in at the moment. All these shops are dated from the 1913. So, as I said, we're back into 1913 now, and you'd presume, looking at this, it was, you know, it's a delivery vehicle. You'd presume it's for pizzas. Apparently, it's for bread. 1913, that's what they deliver your bread on. At the bondage room, with all the straps and whips and the amount of people going up to to Diane saying, "Are you the curator? Are you running this this room?" is untrue. She's just covered in the same kind of straps. The best part is this guy just turned around to Diane and says, "Are you into leather, love?" She didn't say no. She didn't, she doesn't say no. no. Alright. <laughs> Dracula's just been telling me that his favourite, these are all carts from what horses pull. His favourite is in the corner there, the hearse. You can't see it properly but it's a, it's a hearse. And there's my favourite, the Newcastle Breweries. Okay, so we're outside the pub now. The sun in, here it is. Having a good chat. I've tried to say one thing I'd love them to do in this museum is as you come in even if they put the price up another five pounds which I wouldn't mind paying because I didn't pay a penny to come in here it costs a fortune Diane paid it but I'd rather them put the prices up and we all have to get in costume and then everybody walking around would be in the costume from the era which would look fantastic on top of that, what else did I say people should do? Oh, use old money. You know, have machines and you have to put your new modern money in to get old pennies and stuff and spend old money. Make it as authentic as you can. Anyway, we're just stood outside pub, as you do. You were allowed to in these days. You can't stand outside a pub nowadays, it's health and safety. Uh, what Don't bring me. Martin just told us his claim to fame. It wasn't a claim to fame. You just, just did, done did like. he say a claim to fame? Right. It was a mispronunciation of words. What was your claim to fame again, Martin? Please tell us again. I remember the age. <laughs> yeah, go on. I remember going from all the way from Stockton. Yeah. To Somerset. Speak up a bit. You went from Stockton, which is where we are, yeah. to Somerset, which is the south of England. Yeah. yeah. By steam. By steam. steam. What you mean a train? See train, yeah. That's your clip to fame. It's not a clip to fame. It's you went life. Martin has been on his train from here to the south of England, and that's his claim to fame. Get in. What a life he's led. Okay, we're in some weird old house from 19, I don't know, 13, the rest of the street, 1913. There's a dog here in a cage, and apparently, what happened? An old lady sat on it. The lady who owned it had a big dress on and she didn't see it and she stood on it. The lady who owned this place had a big dress on and the dog was hanging around her ankles and she stood on it and killed it. And it's actually stuffed and it's in the house now. That is a real dog. Killed in this house by the woman of the house. Amazing. 
So this is the dentist's room. This is what it would have looked like in 1913. Now I'm scared of dentists. I'm terrified of needles. But I'm not feeling too bad at the moment. I can cope with this. That's not changed. They still have a spitball exactly the same. So we're in 2017 now, and nowadays if you go into a bathroom and you see a toilet seat like that, you think it's a bit outdated, but I'll tell you some of there, the comfiest toilet seats you could ever sit on. The warm, that wooden toilet seat is warm. So at the moment we're stood next to the railway line and I've just learnt something. I was just talking about these weeds. Can you remember these weeds from the 1970s and 80s? You don't see them anymore. You just told me what they're called. What are they called? Railway weed. Railway weeds. They actually brought these to the railways in England, in Britain, to stop the banks from falling down because the roots would hold the banks up. Because all railways have banks going up each side and they were introduced for that reason. Okay, so I've been ordered not to tell this on camera, but who can help it? Who can help it? I'm deep digger Dan, this is what I do. My Martin here, as you might have noticed, Martin has very long, beautiful blonde hair. Look at this, it's beautiful. Apparently some guy went up to him, him, him uh, some guy saw him from a distance in a petrol station once and says, and shouted over or said, would you mind if I have your telephone number? He quite liked him. When he got closer to get his telephone number, he realised it's not a woman, it's a man. Uh, did you give him your number? No. Are you sure? Well, I'll see him next Saturday. <laughs> see him next Saturday. He, yeah, he was in a petrol station and a man came up to him and asked him for his, his telephone number because he looks like a girl with his lovely girl hair. But I'm not allowed to show that in a video. I've, no. I've said I won't do it. I won't even get into the story about when Martin was in the toilet having a wee and another man came in and says, oh, sorry, I've come into the wrong toilet. Yeah, I know. There's a bit of a steam thing coming past and Martin is obsessed with steam trains. If you go in Martin's loft, he's got like a massive steam railway, you know, like a model railway thing set up. And he spent years on it and it looks amazing. I saw it two years ago, I haven't seen it since. I might try and pop up and have another look before I leave. But yeah, anything to do with steam uh, engines, don't have to be trains, just anything to do with... You know, like invention, steamy, iron. You know that boring stuff which no one else cares about. He loves it, he loves it. I've never been into a women's hairdresser's. I don't know how women perm their hair nowadays, but I do know they used to have curlers and all weird things on. They used to put their head in like buckets and stuff. This is like an old fashioned hair perma. Look at this. I've no idea, how, how would it work? You plug it in and electric would curl your hair or something. Look at that! Wow! <laughs> it's just not happening. I'll do this for 20 minutes and if all happens I'll let you know. Moment of truth. Nothing. 20 minutes wasted. Come on, let's move on. Just walking up here and Martin's getting excited like a little child, aren't you, Martin? Yes. I he's seen a sentimental over here and he's getting well excited. It's a sentimental. A what? A sentimental. A sen I can't even say it myself now. Oh, he's so excited. <laughs> sentimental over here. I don't know if it's that or that or that, but he's really enjoying his sentimental. <laughs> I just don't see the interest in bits of metal. I, I don't get it. For all you people who don't know what a sentinel is, a sentinel is a train. So we've come into like a 1940s room here and something really freaky has happened. There's pictures here of like movie stars or something and I just said, is that Clark Gable? Looked on the back, it's not, it's someone called Robert Taylor. Look on this one, it's Clark Gable. So I thought that was Clark Gable, it's not, that is just a complete and utter coincidence. Just chilling in the school classroom at the moment. I remember my first ever day in school. Did you do inquels? We had inquels, yeah. But we didn't use them. 
I'll, I want to tell you the story about my first day in school. Okay? I was... You know how kids go to school at four years old? I was too advanced in nursery. So they put me into school when I was three years old and like three quarters. Right? I, I went into school very early. And I remember... I, my mum walked me down with the teacher into my new school. I remember it very well. Put me in the, in the classroom and my teacher was called, I think, Mrs. Eccleton. And she asked me to go play with Scott. Play with Scott next to the door. And he was playing with a Noah's Ark with all the animals and a boat. And I remember my first few minutes in school at, at three years old. I remember playing with a Noah's Ark with Scott. I remember that first day. My first words as well. Your first day, your first words of school. Go on. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Oh, honestly. Honestly, I'm sorry. I tried to make good videos, and I have some really bad guests. <laughs> Just past the church over there, but uh, we've not gone in there because my my goth Dracula and uh, witch friend refused to go into a church. That's what he just said. Don't, don't try and make me look bad on camera. They said they're not going in a church. They don't do churches. Honestly. If it were a coffin in the ground, they'd happily go in it. So that was the Beamish Museum. Just on his way out there, we've, uh, we've had fish and... Well, uh, I, I had chips. Uh, Martin had fish and chips. Diane had... What did you... Oh, Diane had fish and chips. I don't know. I just had chips because they, they only had enough chip, uh, fish for these two, not for three of us. So I did without. We only had a dab. But they called it a dab. Right? This is weird. They sell two things in that fish and chip shop. Fish and chips. Okay? We joined the queue. We waited 25 minutes. If you look at the menu, it says fish and chips, six pounds something, dab and chips and then in small brackets half of a fish so it's basically fish and chips or half of a fish and chips that's all you can order anyway we joined the queue waiting there 25 minutes uh, they had no fish and they had no chips <laughs> which is why we were waiting by the time they'd made some fish and some chips they got the fish and chips I, know, I, didn't get no. <laughs> I, nice I just got chips because they run out of fish. Chips. So, wonderful fish and chips. Well, wonderful chips. I can't speak for the chips. Uh, fish. Oh, I give up. I give up. Anyway, it looked nice. The chips were nice, but not worth 25 minute wait unless you had fish and chips like these two had. Did you enjoy your fish and chips, Martin? It was very nice. Did you enjoy your fish and chips? I didn't have fish. I don't know where you are. She did. She had some of Martin's fish. I had none. None.